Well, good morning, Life Center. It is amazing to see you this morning. I don't know if you heard, but last night at about 9, 9.15, our premier um, placed new restrictions on our province, which affects us as a church. So we had been operating with a skeleton crew, and now we are even smaller. So there are five of us this morning uh, here in the room. But here's what we know, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, he is there in our midst. And so we know that God wants to move powerfully this morning. And so it is wonderful to see each and every one of you this morning. Uh, If you're here with us, here's what we want you to do in the chat right now. We want you to put a heart icon or a heart emoji, whatever it's called. I'm not that hip, but put a heart icon in there. Let us know that you're here, that you're going to engage the service with your whole heart. Go ahead and do that now. I want to take a moment also to let you know while you're putting in heart emojis at the end of the service today, uh, we are going to be celebrating communion together. And so you don't have to have grape juice and a cracker. Uh, You can use anything in your home. And so we're just encouraging you at the end of the service, we're going to celebrate communion. And so we just invite you to find any type of bread or any type of juice and together that we can do uh, communion as a church, as one church. And so we're looking forward um, to that. As well, too, I want to let you know that we are streaming right now simultaneously to three different places. We're streaming live on Church Online. Uh, That tends to be the buggiest one for us a little bit. It has chat, which is amazing, but it's a little bit buggy. So if you experience technical difficulties, we also streamed live to Facebook. You do not need a Facebook account to watch it on Facebook. And we also stream simultaneously to YouTube. Those who are hosting it today are going to put the links up in the chat for you. So if you do experience any technical difficulty, there are two other places that you can dive in and you can continue to engage. And so it is my honor this morning to take a moment and open our service in prayer. And then we are gonna dive into worship together. And so I encourage you, how we engage church is the same as we're being fully present. We don't just, we're not spectators. You're not an audience. We are the body of Christ together. And we are here to worship Jesus this morning. Kids, students, and adults, all of us together. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. And we pray this morning, everything that you desire for this service will be accomplished. Father, in your name, in Jesus' name, we pray that your presence would go forward and go forth. And it would save people who don't know you. That it would heal the sick. Father, that it would bring health and wholeness to relationships or any relational tensions. Father, that you would bring a word of hope and a word of peace in the midst of this season of uncertainty and storm. Above all, Lord, we thank you that our feet as followers of Jesus, we go through the storm, but they are anchored on solid ground. And so, Father, this morning, we give you praise because even in the midst of this, you are good. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to start with a song that is a song of victory. And Gabe and I, my name is Rhonda. For those of you who don't know me, and Gabe, we're excited to lead worship with you today. And we just encourage you to engage and to lift your hands, to sing with all your heart. And that is something we're all going to be able to do together. And there's a scripture I wanted to open up this morning with in Psalm. And it's verse 44. The psalm we're going to sing to open up is Sea of Victory, that we are going to see a victory. And this is a song of faith. This is a song that we speak to our spirit, that no matter our circumstance, no matter what we're facing right now, today, we can see a victory because we serve a victorious God that wants to be with us and help us to overcome because he's called us to overcome because he is the overcomer. And I love it. It says in Psalm 44, verse 3, that it was not their own strong arm that gave them victory. It was your right hand, talking about God, it was your right hand and strong arm and the blinding light from your face that helped them, for you love them. So may this encourage your heart today that God sees you, he loves you, the love and light of his face is looking upon you and you are deeply loved and we're gonna see a victory. So let's sing this song together. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. We believe it. Yes, 
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever sleep Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you And holy, there is no one like you there is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you And holy, there is no one like you there is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me And holy, there is no one like you there is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken And I will my life upon your love I want to sing that And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken Holy, there is no one none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me sing this together Sing that out. 
out in your house and I I will build my trust in you and I will not I will build and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the things I've made and when it's all about you yes it's all about you Jesus it's all about you it's all about you Yes, it's all about you It's all about you Hey Oh, it's all about you it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. I'm coming back to the heart of. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. And when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. really is our cry this morning, isn't it? God, it is all about you. And when all is stripped away and all fades away, and we simply come, is to come before our King and to bring our offering of praise. And the five of us staff that walked in this morning, we just want to say how much we miss singing with you and worshiping together. And it really has brought to our hearts how much we need one another. And we just love to be together as a family. And I know we're doing it this way through digital connection but there is something so special when we are all together body by body person to person and I stumbled across the scripture in Psalm 42 and it just really does echo our hearts today and it said our heart does break because we do miss each of you and we miss being together and that's a beautiful thing because we are a church family but my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of great celebration. But why am I downcast? Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? But I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And it goes on to say, for each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night, I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. So we can speak to our spirit today to say, why so downcast? Don't be. Put your hope in God, for I will praise him. And that is what we're doing right now. When all is stripped away, we can simply come and bring our praise and our offering to God and to celebrate who God is today in this moment because he is faithful. And it goes on to finish that chapter by once again stating, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And that is our prayer today. God, we will praise you and we will put our hope and our trust in you because you are the rock of our foundation. We build our life on you, God. We build our life on you. And so we look to you. You are our source of strength and our source of help. So where you are right now, just lift your hands up and say, God, I look to you. You are my source of strength and my source of help. You can say that right out loud. Kids, students, all raise your hands. God, I look to you. You are my source of strength and my source of help. Thank you, God. We look to you. You are so faithful to us. I love this song. We chose this song this morning because of the words. 
and it's exactly that scripture. We don't have to be discouraged or overwhelmed because we can put our hope in God. So we look to you, Lord. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. This is our cry today, isn't it? God, we look to you. Let's sing that again. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Sing, I will love you, Lord. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will so much. Wasn't that a beautiful time of worship uh, this morning just to fix our gaze upon Jesus, the author and the founder and the perfecter of our faith. What a privilege and joy it is to gather this way and to lift him up afresh this Sunday morning. For those of you who are just joining in, I want to just remind you at the end of the service, we are going to be celebrating communion together. So you don't have to have grape juice and, uh, and, and any type of bread. You can get any type of bread you want or you can get any type of juice you want. And we are going to be celebrating communion together. Well, I want to welcome you once again to our online service today, our Life Center service today. I'm honored to be hosting because in a moment it's going to be my distinguished privilege 
to let some of you hear for the very first time our amazing campus pastor in Canada, Pastor Terry Burns, who's going to deliver the word this morning. Uh, but if you're new to our Life Center community, if you're new to Life Center, we would love to connect with you uh, when you come in person, when that day <laughs> appears. Um, there are paper connect cards, but we have a digital connect card. It's connect.lifecenter.org. I want to take a moment and say thank you to every single one of you over the last season since we've been going online who has filled out a digital connect card, letting us know how we could pray for you, letting us know how we could encourage, or even saying, I'm new. Uh, church, I want to let you know that there are people who have given their lives to Jesus and in and identified it through a digital connect card and so we want to celebrate that and so that is just connect.lifecenter.org connect.lifecenter.org where you can let us know if you're new we'd love to connect with you we also want to let you know that we have a prayer wall at lifecenter.org slash prayer that if there's anything that we can support you in prayer we would be honored to do so at this time and so you also can go to that wall anytime and you can begin to just take some five minutes 10 minutes 30 minutes whatever it is and you can just begin to also pray through all the different requests because it takes the whole church to be the church in this season and so that's once again at lifecenter.org slash prayer and you can post prayer or you can pray for others in terms of what they're going through you know at this moment it's my honor to receive our tithes and offerings and so there's a give button for those of you who give you can set up recurring giving online uh, at some of our campuses we're figuring out how you can drop off um, your tithes and offerings in those way and then information will be coming forthcoming in that so I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to pray but I also recognize wholeheartedly that there are some of you who due to COVID-19, uh, you may have lost your job or you have a lot of fear and uncertainty. Can I just tell you as a follower of Jesus, um, there is no shame in Christ. There is no shame. There's no condemnation in following Jesus. But I also pray that in this moment that we would as a church and together, not just for Life Center, but wherever we go, that we wouldn't be the ones that are hoarding things, that we would move with an irrational generosity. Yeah, sure, take care of our families, but not in an abundance or, or in a silly way so that it's at the detriment of somebody else. When a spirit of fear wants to grip your heart, I pray that you would push into generosity, not for what we can get from you, the only thing that breaks the back of fear and greed is generosity. And so I pray whether it's at the supermarket, wherever it happens to be, that we would be salt and we'd be light and we wouldn't be the ones, you know, on the news that are hoarding toilet paper or this or that, that we'd be the ones who'd be more generous to give because it is more blessed to give than to receive. But again, we also know that some of you are facing a loss of a job or financial uncertainty. And we want to take a moment and pray to the God who still is provider. All throughout church history, God has provided for his people in extraordinary ways. We believe that he is a supernatural God and we're gonna pray in this moment. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for who you are. And we don't pray according to circumstance. We pray according to the nature and character of who you have forever established yourself to be and that you are healer and that you are savior and you are also provider. And so, Father, we receive these tithes and offerings, and like loaves and fishes, we, we pray that you would take them and multiply to meet the growing needs within the church. But also, Lord, we pray for those who have lost income or even the uncertainty of income. They don't know what the future holds. Father, I pray against a spirit of fear, and I pray that they would lean in and trust you as provider that we as your people would be salt and we'd be the light, that we would not be problems everywhere we go, that we would be nor the hero because that's you, but when we follow you, that we'd live according to a different king in a different kingdom, not only buying and selling and sowing and reaping, that you are the God who can do supernatural things. And we put our faith and our hope and our trust and our security in you. And if you agree with me, throw a little emoji, a little prayer emoji or a little amen in the chat. That would be amazing. 
Amen. Well, I want to take a moment and I want to celebrate all of our kids. I want to celebrate our kids. And parents, if you didn't know, there's a Facebook page for Life Kids um, that you can download. There's amazing devotionals going up, activities that you can do with your kids. But I just want to celebrate our entire kids team that is just ministering to you as parents, trying to help you out as much as we possibly can. So again, it's just a Facebook page that you can like or that you can you know, engage with. You can watch things that are there. You can download activities. There's devotions, things that you can do with your kids kids. And I just want to take a moment and, and share that, but also say you can share with parents, your friends, just take a moment and take that page and share it with others. If it could be a blessing to them, amazing. Just take a moment and you can do that as well today. Uh, as well, too, for our students on the online service on Friday night, we want to celebrate you. It's going to maybe look a little different this week because, again, we can only be five in the building. But I just want to celebrate our students diving on, opening up Zoom chat rooms, and just doing all that they can do to be a blessing. It's, it's an amazing thing. So celebrate every single one of our students diving in. Love it. As well, too, daily devotions continue this week on, on Facebook and Instagram at 9 a.m. We have a staff-led devotional. And then at noon, we have staff-led prayer. That's on Facebook and on Instagram. So if you follow us on either of those socials, you'll see it pop up. So thank you for engaging with that, sharing with that, diving in. And then as well, uh, this week, we also want you to pray Pastor Barry and Joyce did something neat. If they got into their car and they did a prayer patrol or a prayer drive throughout the city, that's an extraordinary thing that you can do. But you can also walk throughout your neighborhood and you can pray for your neighbors because one thing hasn't changed. And that is a few months ago, we all took time to fill out cards like this and write names of people that we are believing God this Easter to come to know Jesus. And for some of you, it may be friends and family and coworkers, but it could also be neighbors. And so we want to encourage you this week, one way that you can make a difference is, yeah, you can go for a walk, but we encourage you also to prayer walk your neighborhood. That can be as simple as reading a psalm over your neighborhood. It can be praying prayers for over your neighbors. Um, you don't have to go lay hands on their door or anything like that. That'll freak them out. It's physical distancing, but you can just walk through a neighborhood. But we also want to let you know that we're praying for every single name. And don't forget to continue to invite people to our Easter services that are upcoming. You can invite them to any service, but in particular Easter, because we are praying for God to do extraordinary things. We are asking Jesus to touch Willow's heart and Willow's life and the various Willows. We're still praying for all of these names. Well, it is my distinguished privilege to stop talking and to introduce the one who is going to preach God's word this morning, finish our series on loving. And so there's this hands up emoji that I want you to throw up in the chat as you welcome Pastor Terry this morning, who is going to share God's word with us. Pastor Terry. Well, hello, Life Center. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for this uh, wonderful privilege to share God's word with you this morning. Now, Preachers like to begin their message often with a question, so I want to start by asking you a question. How many of you right now are at home watching and participating in this service in your PJs? Just throw your hands up in the air on the screen if you are watching at home in your PJs. Now, I know we would all prefer to be together as one body worshiping, but if there's one advantage that this time of gathering in our homes of self-isolation, it is going to church in your PJs. Come on, can I get an amen from anyone today? When we get back to normal, I think we might need a PJ Sunday here or there down the road. Or at least some Life Center merch. Maybe some Life Center pajamas, Life Center slippers. I'll just throw that out there. But today we're going to conclude our series on loving. Can you believe that when we began this month, that we'd be here at this point, and how the value of loving would take on such a whole new different meaning for us today? I believe wholeheartedly that the Holy Spirit has led us specifically to this value for such a time as this. So one last time, let me remind you what it is we mean when we say we value meaning, or loving. Jesus' love never fails. Our love for others, therefore, isn't negotiable. Without love, we're just making noise. When we fall short, we are trusting in the never-failing love of Jesus to make up the gap. The American novelist James Lane Allen once said that adversity doesn't build character. Rather, it reveals it. And right now, in this moment, we are experiencing a moment of, of, of adversity that our world has not seen for many generations. 
We are witnessing both locally and globally a revealing of character. And there have been some incredible examples that have come from this time. I just want to take a moment to thank and salute all of you who are working on our front lines, our healthcare workers who are working tirelessly and fearlessly. Through many phone calls and conversations, I have heard of people who don't know what the future looks like on the other side of this, but you are putting your trust and your faith in God, and that is your testimony. There have been some wonderful examples. And as we know, if any of you have been watching the news, there are not such great examples, but we'll leave that for the evening news. We as a church, we have not been exempt from our own moments of revealing. That as we sit at home, unable to meet together, our ministry put on pause, our gatherings, our sense of normalcy suspended, there are things that we are learning, things that have been revealing of who we are as a church. What has been revealed are the things that matter most in the kingdom of God. We have learned that worship still matters, whether you are dressed in your Sunday best or in your PJs. We have learned that community still matters, whether you meet together in a room or online on Zoom. We have learned that faith still matters, trust still matters, love still matters. And we have also learned what has also been revealed are the things that maybe aren't necessarily bad, but in the kingdom of God don't matter as much as those things I just mentioned. You know, I'm going to tell a story, and for those of you who are part of our Canada campus, it's not the first time you've heard this story, but on my very first Sunday visiting Life Center, I had an experience that I'll never forget. I was no more than five minutes through my message when suddenly, unexpectedly, the power went out. This had never happened before, ever in my ministry. And so I was standing there facing this this group of people who I couldn't see a single face. It was pitch black in the room. And me, a stranger, not knowing anybody's name and people barely knowing my name, looking at each other, or or at least we we thought we were looking at each other, you couldn't see. And I was standing up there just begging, praying for somebody to come up on stage and relieve me of my duties and say, let's go for lunch. But nobody came. And I stood up there for what felt like an eternity, but really it was just more than 30, 60 seconds. Finally, to sort of break the silence, to break the tension, I said to this room of darkness, I said, what do you want me to do? To which someone in the back called out, keep preaching. You know what I learned, what was revealed in a moment like that, is that you don't need lights. You don't need a microphone to preach the word of God. That this this building we call the church is nothing more than four walls and a roof which houses the people of God, which are the church. That these things like microphones and lights and buildings, they are good because they are functional and they help us, they help us pursue the mission that we feel God has placed on us. But they are just that tools that in the kingdom of God, these things are considered non-essential services in God's kingdom. It's true that in moments like these, and even more, that these moments like the one I just spoke to and the one we are experiencing now are moments of revealing. But here's the thing. When you serve a God who is Lord over all, and that God is your Father and your provider, these moments aren't just moments of revealing, but they are also moments of refining. That when you serve a good God, adversity is not meant to wreck you, but it is meant to refine you. And we see this in the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9 tells of God's testing, of a spiritual testing that is related to silver and gold being placed in the fire. Zechariah 13 9 says, And I will put this third into the fire, and I will refine them as one refined silver, and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name, and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people. And they will say, The Lord is my God. Now please understand, in no way am I relating to what we are experiencing now to something that is God's doing or God's testing. Nobody should ever make that claim because only God knows and God's ways are higher than our ways. But if God is Lord over all and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, could it be that God might desire to use this current moment in your life to refine you in a way that you have never experienced before? Could it be that God, like the song we declared earlier, can take what the enemy has meant for evil, has meant to harm us, to separate us, to put fear on us, and the Lord can take it and turn it into something good? For those of us whose life is hidden in Christ, adversity won't just be your revealing. 
it will also be your moment of refining. But what you might ask, is the Lord wanting to reveal and refine in us today? Well, I'm glad you asked. For what the Lord wants to reveal and refine in us today is the same thing he wants to reveal and refine in us in every moment of our lives, and that is our love. And we see Paul at the conclusion of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. For the past month, we have been in this chapter known as the famous love chapter. Some have said this is, this is the best work that Paul ever did, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We see his concluding thoughts in verse 13 say, Now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Isn't it amazing that when this month began, 1 Corinthians 13, for some of us, was the passage in Scripture most associated with being read at weddings, and now here we are looking to it as a field manual for how to survive a global pandemic? Could it be that the Holy Spirit is reminding us that of all the gifts God has so graciously given us, that those which remain, those which abide, meaning that which endures for all of eternity, is faith, it is our hope, it is our love, you see, what Paul is saying here in verse 13 is no different than what he is saying through every verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and that is stop fixating and focusing on that which is temporary and neglecting that which endures for all of eternity. You see, the Corinthians, they were a distracted church. God had given them wonderful gifts, but they had become distracted by building an identity upon these gifts especially those that were the most visible, the most big, like prophecy and tongues and words of knowledge. These gifts given to the church meant to build up the body, to serve the body, were being used as a, as a form of self-service, a form of self-spectacle, ways of showing off their, their gifts, their strengths in front of others. They had forgotten one of the primary revelations of God's nature, that God does not look at the outward appearances like you and I look at outward appearances, but God focuses on what the heart says, on what the heart does. See, outwardly, they were saying all the right things, doing all the right things, checking off all the right boxes. But Paul says, inwardly, you are nothing. There is nothing happening. So what is Paul trying to say here? Is he saying that spiritual gifts are no longer good nor necessary? Now you and I know for those of us who have been filled with the Holy Spirit and are ministering in our gifts with power, we know that that's not what Paul is saying here at all. Paul says that God's gifts are irrevocable, meaning that he won't take them away from us. That spiritual gifts are to be sought after and prayed for. That spiritual gifts are necessary and needed for you and I to be the body of Christ. You see, what Paul is not saying here is that gifts aren't good. It's that he's saying that gifts are not eternal. That spiritual gifts, no matter how awesome or how significant they might be, they are temporary. Last week, Pastor Jason shared in verse 9 to 10 that Paul said that spiritual gifts are partial. And that is why love is the more excellent way. That because gifts are partial, when perfect comes, as Paul says, it means that the partial will pass away. What is that perfect that Paul speaks of? That perfect is Jesus Christ, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says it this way. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. You see, this is our foundation, the foundation of our faith, of our hope, of our love, that one day Christ will return, and on that day we will be made perfect. For on that day, your gifts, regardless of how significant or how big or how small they are, they will pass away, for in the presence of perfection, your gifts will no longer be needed. As one theologian wrote, knowledge and prophecy are useful as lamps in the darkness, but they will be useless when the eternal day has dawned. And I believe as we stand here in these unprecedented times, God is speaking to our church today the same thing that he is speaking to the to the church in Corinth. He's saying what matters most in my kingdom, what matters most is your faith, it is your hope, and it is your love. You might remember as kids, we played a, a hypothetical game with our friends when we would turn to our friends and we'd say, if you were ever stuck on an island, 
and you could not escape, what three items would you bring with you? And my answer would always be, my, for number one, my Bible, because I was a good Sunday school boy, and I always had to have the right answer. It would be my video game collection, because I'm sure I'd find some sort of power outlet on that island. And number three would be my Hardy Boy collection. What three items would you bring with you if you were stuck on an island? Well, here we are. And perhaps today we're not stuck on any island, although I wouldn't mind self-isolating on a warm, tropical island, would you? But here we are. We are stuck as a church in a place of self-isolation, unable to worship together, unable to meet together. And the question that is asked to us today is what matters most to you? You know, recently I saw on the internet this hilarious article. You know, recently I saw on the internet this hilarious article on the Babylon Bee. If you're unfamiliar with the Babylon Bee, it is a 100% fake, let me say it again, 100% fake uh, Christian satire. And so they post articles, let me say it again, 100% fake. And I saw this article that made me laugh, and I want to read to you the headline. It said, this happened just right after the announcement came that we would be meeting as a church online. And it said that nation's churches provide fog machines for families worshiping at home. Let me read to you the first paragraph. It says, to provide a more authentic atmosphere for families forced to worship at home, thanks to coronavirus fears, the nation's churches graciously donated fog machines to their members for worship this past Sunday. Come on, admit it. That's funny. Because how many of you right now are sitting there participating in service and you're thinking to yourself, you know what we need right now? You know what would make church so much better right now at home? A fog machine. Now we know today that these things, they're, they're not bad by any means, that they are good, but we need to remember that there are so much that is added to us that are just like what Paul spoke about spiritual gifts. They are tools, they are good, but they are functional, and they are temporary. Paul says, don't fix your eyes on the things that are temporary. Fix your eyes on the things that are eternal. And so the question that we must ask today of ourselves is what exactly do families need who are worshiping at home if not a fog machine? And what do the most vulnerable people in our church need in times like this? What is the one who is perfectly healthy, but you are single today, and you are at home not able to spend this time with other people? And what about those of you who today who are unsure what life looks like on the other side, whether your jaw will still be there or not? What do we need in times like this? What can we give to one another? What can we grow in ourselves? The answer remains these three things which abide for all of eternity. Faith, hope, love. See, if you want to know what an essential service looks like in the kingdom of God, it is these three. Faith, hope, and love. Now, you've, if you've been tracking with us these past few weeks, by now you probably get it. You get the significance of love. But the question remains, why does Paul include faith and hope alongside love? Now we know today that faith and hope are an eternal part of God's love. That as God brings us towards his perfect end, which is his love, faith and hope are to be our two closest companions. For faith and hope are the means by which God brings us towards his love. What is faith? Faith is the human response to divine provision. Faith is the simple trust and surrender in the rulership of God in your current season and circumstances. Faith is believing that in the coming days, weeks, months, perhaps even years, that you will stand witness to the God who is revealed as Jehovah Jireh, meaning God is our provider. And I know maybe for some of you today, this current moment has you fearful, perhaps is unpredictable of what the future looks like. Let me tell you today, yes, the government might be able to take care of some of your needs, but I'm here to tell you today that it is God who will be the one who will take care of all your needs. Matthew chapter 6, 26 says it this way, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food for the, in their barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to, to him than they are? And I believe today that there is someone here on the other side of that screen who needs to hear that message today. You are valuable to God. You are so much more valuable than you, than you even realize. God will take care of all of your needs. 
He will provide. He is just calling you today to have faith. Today, I believe that God is calling the faith of our church to rise, to rise to new levels like we have never seen before. What if in this current moment, God is desiring to refine your faith? Faith is the human response to divine provision. And hope is the expectation of more to come. Hope is knowing today, it is the confidence that he who promised is faithful and that all of God's promises find their yes and amen in him. Today, we might not be certain about what the future holds, but let's be certain about one thing today. We know who holds the future. And it is through our hope that we are able to recognize God's sufficiency in our, for our lives. Hope today is not in the economy stabilizing. Hope today is not in the stock market rebounding. Hope for you moms and dads sitting at home is not that your kids will get to go back to school, although we are praying and we are fasting that our children will go back to school at some point. Thank you, Jesus. Our hope is that one day Jesus will return for his church. And on that day, our dwelling place will be with God. And on that day, we will know that he will wipe away every tear from every eye. For on that day, there will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, nor pain. For we know that the former things will pass away. Our hope today is on the one seated on the throne who will declare, Behold, I am making all things new. Faith and hope are God's perfect companions leading us towards his divine purpose for our life, and that is his love in us. And so that is why Paul, at the conclusion of 1 Corinthians 13, says that love, though it remains alongside faith and hope, it is the greatest of these. Love is God's supreme viewer virtue planted in our lives. You see, while faith and hope are incredibly important to our lives, they are no substitute for love. The reason being today is simple. It's because God is love. God is not faith. God is not hope. But as 1 John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And I promise you today, more important to God than refining your faith, more important to him than refining your hope, he wants to refine your love. For when your love is refined, you are refined. And by refining your love, God wants to bring you closer and closer to the image of his perfect son, Jesus Christ. You know, we're living in some interesting times right now. And it's been interesting watching some of the more recent developments and efforts taking place to try to get people to abide by the rules, to stay inside, to self-isolate, to do what's necessary for us to flatten the curve, to not overwhelm our, our healthcare systems. And people are wondering, people are asking, some people are even complaining about what it's going to take for our society to do what is necessary to protect our most vulnerable and to see this come to an end sooner rather than later. Why aren't people, why aren't everyone complying? Why are some people seeming to do what they want to do? Is it a lack of faith in our government? I don't think so. Is it a lack of hope that this will come to an end sooner rather than later? I doubt it. See, the answer to that question, to this dilemma, it's not faith. It's not hope. The answer is love. To what end are we willing to love our neighbor? That is the question that our world seems to have no answer to, has no solution. But the good news today is that if there is ever a people who are prepared to go to no matter what end in order to love our neighbor, it is the church. Because we look to the one who answered the question, to what end am I willing to love my neighbor by giving his life for us on a cross and calling you and I to go to no end, no end to do, to count the cost in order to love our neighbors as Christ has loved us. Dr. Haddon Robinson, the late American preacher, once said this, he said, love is that thing which if a church has it, it doesn't really need much else. And if it doesn't have it, well, whatever else it has doesn't really matter that much. I'm here to tell you today that without a shadow of a doubt, that what we have witnessed this past few weeks, Life Center, we've got it. We have it. We have love. And if we have love today, 
Well, what else do we really need in a moment like this? Faith, hope, and love. These three remain. But the greatest of these is love. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful today. Lord, that wherever we sit, wherever we are tuning into the service today, God, that we can know your love. God, we thank you today for Jesus Christ, the perfect revelation of agape love, of your love. And God, we look to you today for our hope. We have faith in you today. But God, you are our example today. You are the one that we want to follow, that we want to emulate, because you are the perfection of love. And God, today, I know that we don't understand fully what is happening in our world today. But what we do know today is we serve a God who is Lord over all. And God, you can take this moment that we don't understand, that is out of our control, and you can turn it into something good. Lord, our prayer today is that this moment of adversity, God, would reveal what matters most in your kingdom. And that we would begin to tune our hearts into the things which matter most. God, I pray that you would do a work of refining in our lives. God, that we would submit ourselves to the work of the Spirit in moments like these. God, refine us, we pray. Refine us into the image of your Son. Make us like you, we pray, O God. And Lord, build in our lives an enduring foundation of faith that you are our perfect provider, of hope that one day you will make all things new and love today. The greatest of these is love. God, may we love one another, Lord, as, as you have loved us. And may we, as Paul now exhorts in, in the next chapter in verse one, let us follow the way of love, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, as I shared a couple of times at the beginning and the middle, we are going to receive and celebrate communion together. We're going to come to the Lord's table. So in your homes, I invite you to locate your elements. I have mine here. But what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says something that Pastor Terry 
just alluded to brilliantly. And how good was Pastor Terry? I know I am encouraged and filled with hope. How good was that? You know, it's amazing today because in 1 Corinthians 11, before we receive, just before we receive communion, it says that you and I, before we receive it, are to examine ourselves. And if you're anything like me, it does not take much thought, reflection, or prayer to begin to quickly see the areas of my life where I fall short, where my behavior is crooked, where there's iniquity, and where I have transgressed God's ways. And so that leads me, and symbolically there are people who are watching right now who don't know Jesus, like Willow. And that leads me and that leads you to a place, a, a dead end. And where a choice has to be made, not a dead end, more a fork in the road, where a choice must be made. And here's the choice in its simplicity. I can choose the path of self-righteousness. I can choose the path of self-justification. I can choose the path of religion, trying to make myself perfect or better. I could choose the path of blame, of condemning others and excusing my own behavior. Or I or Willow who doesn't yet know Jesus. And the symbolic Willow is watching. We can all come at the same path. And we can reject the, the road of self-justification and religion and condemnation and blame. And we can take another path, which is to admit that we fall short, that our behavior is crooked, and that we have transgressed God's right, God's ways. And we can take the path of admitting that we need saving, that we need forgiveness, that we need healing. So he, here's what's true of all of us. God loves me as much as he loves Willow. The difference between Willow and I is not that we sin, not that our behavior is crooked, not that we transgress God. The difference is who do we look to for saving, for restoration, and for healing. God loves us, but today, faith is, not, is making the choice to anchor our hope in what Christ has done on the cross and not in our own behavior. And here's what I have great faith, that there are countless willows in this moment who are going to reject the path of self-justification and turn on the path of admitting that they need a savior. So I'd be honored to lead us all in prayer by together saying, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me just the way I am, yet loving me enough not to leave me the way I am. And so I confess my need of you be my savior, healer, provider, and the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so when we finish our service, if you prayed that for the very first time, or if in a season of uncertainty you once had faith, and now everything's being shaken and you're returning to your roots of faith, if that's you, just go to connect.lifecenter.org and let us know that you've given your life to Jesus so that you've returned to Jesus because we want to be praying for you and supporting for you. But the scripture says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed after supper and giving thanks, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is his body, which is broken for us to take it, eat it. And as often as we do, do it in remembrance of him, remembrance of the God who can make broken things whole. And there is a collective agony of brokenness that we are seeing. And so by faith for our individual lives and families and cities and nation and world, let us put our faith in a God who loves us, who has not abandoned us, in the God who can take broken things and put them back and make them whole. Let's partake together.
And then after supper, he took the cup that was representative of his blood that's going to be shed for the remission of our sins. And mine is the same juice that we usually use, so it's red. Yours may be a different color, but it is only by the shed blood of Jesus that though our sins are as red as this juice that I am now going to drink, that he makes us whiter than snow as far as the east is from the west does he remove our sin from us and that he loves us that he becomes our father our perfect heavenly father so by faith let us reject the way of justification and self self-righteousness and let us fall on the place and the side of savior and eating saving grace let us thank God this morning at his table for the first time or afresh that he is a God who forgives us of all of our iniquity and cleanses us of all of our sin. Well, amen. Well, we want to thank you for joining us uh, this morning. It's been our honor to spend an hour or so together looking to Jesus, growing to be more like Jesus. I want to remind you, tomorrow, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. and 12, uh, Facebook and Instagram, we'd love to be with you, spend time with you in devotions and prayer. And as Pastor Terry so eloquently shared, as followers of Christ, rooted in, abiding in the love of God, may we love our neighbors, may we walk with the companions of faith and hope, but may our hearts always be grounded in love, because Life Center since 1981, one thing remains the same. His love never fails. It hasn't failed then, and it won't fail now. May God bless you, and may he keep you. Have an amazing Sunday.